Hey guys, uh, today I want to talk about how an insurance agent makes money. And I actually did a 20 minute long video of this earlier, but I ended up erasing it, uh, the board, and and wanted to start over because I, I pictured all the comments of everybody like hating on me. <laughs> it just kind of got to me. Uh, you know, I've been doing this for several years and you'd think I'd have the confidence to accept that, but I'm thinking, okay, what if all these guys... So what I thought a better way of doing this is I'll show you the different incomes that I've made in the insurance industry. You see a lot of videos out there where you can make $100,000 your first year, which is possible, and you're making three, dollars $400,000 by the year three and four, which also is possible, but at least the path I've seen in the last decade, and I've been in it probably almost 11, 12 years now, it's not likely depending on the agency that you're going with. So if you're health and life and you're the 8% that make it the first year, by the way, 89 to 92% of the people quit the first year. And there's a reason. It's a tough gig. And you're constantly prospecting, door knocking as they call it. So you got to know what industry you're going to. I'm not really that type. So <laughs> if you're looking to do a door knock, that's probably not me. I'm not going to knock on someone's door. I barely wanted to walk around and sell rocks with my daughter. <laughs> I thought it was the greatest thing in the world, but I was embarrassed to walk around. It's like, oh, you want to buy a rock? So if you're that type of person, definitely subscribe. This is the training that you'll get. How to make a six-figure income in the industry without doing the door knocks and the heavy lifting and a lot of it. It takes a lot of work. Don't get me wrong. There's it's not a, a you know a once and done type thing. But here's what I did. I'm gonna explain where I started, which was Farmers Insurance. It was a company called 21st Century. So we'll just call it 21st. And what I did is uh, I came in at a 29,000 per year salary. Uh, I actually came in at 28, but I thought it was 29. Uh, we we messed up the agreement there, so whatever the case was, and that was what I earned right away. So not bad. I ended up spending, I believe, six years there. The cool part is they provided leads. It was quite literally call center style. There's a phone on your head, headset going. You push a button, and there's a caller instantly. They spent millions of dollars advertising to get people. I wrote about three plus million dollars there and uh, beyond. So they started paying per policy, not premium. So it was hard to track the actual premium. Now that was my salary. Uh, what I did my first year, and it was actually the first, I think six to eight months, because I believe I started there in September. So from September to a few months later, it was actually a few months in the new year, I was close to 40,000 plus a year. And that was great. I was happy with that. My first full year at the company, I had the 29000 but because I had sold what they call a sliding scale, so if you sold uh, zero policies all the way up to, it was like 35 ish you wouldn't make anything. You just made your salary, and that was fine. At the time, that wasn't that bad. But if you sold 36 policies all the way up to, it was close to 50 then you started making like $2 per policy all the way back to square one. So 50 times two made $100. And then it went from 51 up to about 65. And now you're at like $5. And it essentially went down a whole path. There was about 10 plus levels. And the, the last level was right around 180 policies this per month. Uh, it was close to uh, 40 some odd dollars. It was like 41 bucks a piece. So you had potential to earn roughly that uh, $8,000 plus in commission. Uh, I was this guy. I was working heavy months. And on an average month, I would fall right in the middle. So if I worked 40 hours a week, took as many phone calls as I could, sold what I could, dealt with people that were had good attitudes, I really focused on the type of person I talked to, and by far excelled beyond to be uh, in our center, the top guy. So what I did is I ended up on an average month. So let's just say eight months out of the year, I was earning roughly, we'll say uh, it was about 15 to $20 a policy. Okay. And it was, we'll just say like uh, about a hundred policies. 
So I was right around that 100 mark on a typical don't want to work over, go home, spend time with my family. And so I was making about $1,500. But the months I really pushed, I literally worked double. Now, because you had a salary, I was on a time and a half bonus. So if I worked more hours than 40, they owed us time and a half. That's just the way that it worked there. So I was making time and a half, uh, plus, you know, I uh, close to another 40 hours on top of that. This was uh, about four months out of the year. Okay, because I could only do it so much. You go crazy if you do it. It's just literally work till midnight, go to bed, get up, start at eight in the morning, <laughs> go to midnight. You run off of energy drinks and, and caffeine. So essentially, you're making about $1,500 a month and you're getting time and a half. There's these little kicker bonuses if you sell their more difficult leads where they were buying leads versus generating their own. And there's a whole little path that they went through. We're not gonna go exactly what they did. Um, so that first year was great because I believe my first year, it was 90,000. So could you? Yeah, absolutely. Can you get into that six figure? And this is PNC. This is just selling auto at the time. There was no home. There was no renters. There was no nothing. It was just auto. Do what you could. Sell what you can. And we'll worry about the rest later. First year, full year. So I'm about a year and a half in. I made 90 the following year. I, I made close to 40, uh, 40 that first year because of all the commissions that I made the first couple months. Uh, 90 the first year. And, I, and it started to go up. It was like 120 the next year. And then I think I got 125 the year after, 140, so I'm one, two, three, four. And then it started to decline and I'll explain what happened there. So these were essentially my salaries that I was making, uh, just picking up the phone and, and trying to sell policies. Uh, what happened was, so, you know, you're making 8,000 plus here plus your salary, so your 2,000, so your 10,000, and then it just climbed. Now, that's not every month because like I said, I'm only doing that four months out of the year, but when you're working 80 hours, plus time and a half, plus these little kickers, plus these bonuses, so those four months were 90, were probably over half of my income, those four months were paying me roughly 15 to 25,000 on their own. Okay. Now you couldn't just work the four months and leave. <laughs> it's a, it was a, a clock in nine to five job or eight to eight to five job. Uh, so it was great. The part that I fell off and the reason I left was because this 140 quickly went back down to 90. And then it was projected when I left, I think I had projected it below 75,000 a year. And boo hoo, what was the guy making 70, right? But when you're when you've built this and the stress here is beyond belief, it, there's a lot there. Uh, when you're doing that and you're coming home just to sleep to go back to work, probably would have put up a tent if I had to. Uh, when you're doing that activity, and that's where the, the goal is, is the activity. When you're getting all of that activity, sure, you're gonna make a lot of income. But what happened was they noticed that we were making, there was a handful of us doing this. And they said, no, we're going to change it up. We're going to kind of eliminate the 21st branch because it's not as profitable as we thought, which sure, that's just part of the market. We're going to create them and turn them into farmer's agents. Okay, but they didn't stay farmer's agents. <laughs> we, we essentially were kind of like the shunned kids of farmers <laughs> where we didn't get renewals. No, it was just commissions on sales. So this whole book of business, if you figured an average policy, let's just say $2,000 a policy, which it's lower, but if you figure an average policy, this is just auto, we're writing 40, 50, 60, 80, 150, $200,000 a month in premium. So I, I believe my last year I left, I actually increased, I was just short of a million in a year. Uh, so doing that, writing more business, I ended up making less money because when they switched it over to farmers, they went into something I value, which is value-based selling. And I appreciate their training. They're great for that, but the pay just wasn't enough for me to stay. 
what happened was the value-based selling, they wanted to incorporate all of the extra lines of business. So now they're saying, well, now we're gonna do renters. And they filled our pipeline with a bunch of renters calls. And if you know anything, a renters call does take about five to 10 minutes. Okay, where our average auto call would take about five to eight minutes. Okay, so we've now doubled, because we're, if we're quoting a renter, we had to pivot, otherwise we would lose commission. They actually took half of the commission away if you didn't pivot enough, there was a percentage where you had to hit the renters. So what happened was, is we were now doubling our talk time, so we were spending 10 to 15, 16 minutes per call, so naturally that's gonna slow our sales down here. We're gonna lose some of those. We're essentially doing half of what we used to do, but they were counting on the premium coming up. Problem is where they would pay a one-to-one -one on an auto, and if you sold a really big pilot, like the hard ones, it was a one-to-two, sometimes two and a half. That was like your essentially your pay on the hard leads, and th th these were the auto, but they would pay a 0.4 to one on the renters, this goes the other way. Okay, so it would take me three renter sales to equivalent what I would need for one auto. Very uh, not well received across the board, which I get it. Like as a company owner, I do want to capture the renters. And then we started moving into home. So they said, renters, okay, we know you're complaining about the renters. So let's add some home. Okay, now a home quote is going to take you about 10 to 15 minutes, sometimes more, because you got to do something called an RCE. You've got to run a replacement cost estimator on the home. You've got to get the value of the home. You've got to include water backup. You're coaching somebody. The problem is we weren't trained beyond four hours. <laughs> so the four hours of training we got for the home, it was a little bit ridiculous. Because you got to learn, and this was all the ones that that sank, sunk, and the ones that could swim, swim. <laughs> and luckily, I was one that swam. And I actually asked to be. Sh I said, "Can I fly out to get to first homeowners training? Because I got to, I got to make money. I got to get in this. I got to learn this." And the four hours was okay. You know, here's what a house is. Here's what a replacement cost looks like. Here's what the build is, and you just learned it as you went. So it was a little bit of a crapshoot. Uh, these policies went to the actual agents, by the way. Some of them hated us because we didn't know a whole lot of what we were doing at the time, but we learned it. We learned it over time. So we were now spending 15 on a good day if we went fast and went fast and we got some trust of the customer and we could sell it. We were spending 20 minutes on a good home and auto and we're spending 25 plus minutes on the good total package policy. And here's where it got to be where I saw this income going down and down because now I'm spending, we're just gonna say an average of 30 minutes on a call. Okay, versus what took me eight minutes. On a really long call, 15 minutes. My call, my talk time was a little bit higher for the ones I sold, super low. I had some 30 second calls, a lot of 30 second calls because the people that you're talking to weren't amazing, right? So just get off the phone. Don't try to put the, the square peg in the round circle, right? So we were trying to do that and we essentially were just talking a lot. Now you're spending all this time, the guy doesn't trust you or doesn't buy. That's the, the quick sales. Now this was a first call close environment. So if you didn't sell on the first call, you could follow up, but if he called back in while you weren't there and your best friend Joe over there sold it, you're done. They they won, they got the commission, that was it. It was pretty pretty cutthroat, um, but we, we made it work. We actually were pretty decent team wise. So I would give you know coworkers policies back if they were there. I just didn't want them to lose their money. Uh, so we built this. Now we're taking more talk time. So you can kind of see where that these, these projections have dropped off 
And since then, I've actually branched off. The biggest issue with this whole thing is not necessarily the fact that they changed this and there wasn't as much training or the fact that I'm dropping below the 75 and might even go down to the 60 again. But the salary went up, so the salary went from 29 you know, to 35. And I think when I left, I was at a 45,000 a year salary. Okay, so the 45 plus 30 is where I was getting the 75 from. So when I left there, I was just below that. Uh, and you were, your quality was rated. The biggest thing is you've got to main, you got to remember. So the reasons that these are tougher and the reason a lot of agents quit in the beginning is you've got the stress level. So the level of stress is high. Okay, it almost makes 75 not worth it. Sounds crazy, I know. If you're making less than that, you're probably thinking I'm I'm the worst guy in the world. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help you there. Um, so the stress level is super high. The close rate was super low, uh, unless you were really good, uh, which I, I had a decent close rate. Uh, the amount of time it took to do a quote was really high. Uh, so you were potentially shooting out into things that could potentially turn into nothing. The first call close environment added to the stress. But essentially what happens is this is this is like the model. The biggest reason and the worst part about it is you have no equity. Okay. Now I'm not bashing farmers because they have an incredible 401k. They have one of the best health plans. They train you fairly well. This was a little bit uh, not great, but normally they train you extremely well. I'm sure if a new guy came in, uh, I think they spend like a month or more training you this stuff uh, along with licensing and all that. So kudos to them for that. Uh, actually, when people leave them to, for us now, <laughs> I know they're trained really well and they do pretty well in our environment. But the all of this, the biggest thing is you own zero of that. So month two and month three and month 15 and month 40, six years in this business, writing 4 million plus in premium, let's just say 5 million, I get this much in renewals. And this is where I think the failure happened where the agents are not going to stay this. Sure, you're going to get the people that will work for 50, 60, 70, and some of your super, superstars are going to work the extra time, and they could probably get back up here because I think you can max out at like 60,000 salary, whatever they do. I, I'm not there, so I don't know. But at the end of this whole process, you own nothing. So you were literally working a high-paying job forever. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you the next step, which is what I moved to, where I actually make <laughs> less than this right now, and I'll explain why, but I'm gonna show you what the goal is or the future plan is. Uh, because this video is already getting close to you know 20 minutes long, I'm gonna link it in this video here. So go ahead and click on this video, and I'm gonna go over what I am doing now and how this and this is gonna look like nothing.